escorting you back to your country. Es nuestro. Muchas gracias por su ayuda. Aren't you going to read me my rights? Improved. At his present rate, in 10 years, he'd be mediocre. <laughs> Maybe by that time he'll have finished that short story he's working on. Please say about all this. Well, when his family's lawyer called, there was some vague talk about drugs, that Ted was involved with smuggling, but I know for a fact that's just plain Fruit Loops. Daddy, it's true. Ted's like a brother to me. Well, you know that I've known him since he was, what, 11 years old. I mean, I know, I know how he felt about that whole drug thing. Kids used to hit on him for being so out of it. He doesn't have to use drugs to smuggle them. I mean, not every bookmaker gambles. Dad. Well, there is big money in drugs. For Ted? Daddy, what does he need the money for? The son of the chairman of the board of Teletex? A kid whose father is the director of, of five other corporations? Come on, Daddy. It happens, Julie. I don't know. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Couldn't we at least find out what's going on? Daddy, please. His family's really upset. Now, let me get this straight. Charlie Hume's daughter comes in here with a story and you want me to check it out. Quietly. What are we turning into, a detective agency? I'm working on that illegal alien series. Now it ties into big politics. Do it in your spare time. Nose around the cop house on your lunch hour or something. It's after lunch. 
How about my dinner hour? Whatever's best. All you know is an arrest took place, someone said drugs. Where's he being held? That's just it. Nobody seems to know. He just got in that car and disappeared. Dig around. Why me? Why not Driscoll or Feldman? I'm not exactly buddy-buddy over at the cop house. Mm-hmm. It's good training for you. Ingratiate yourself. Just remember to do it quietly. Why quietly? Cops are acting strange about this one. Okay. But remember, only if I have time after the illegal alien story. Understood. Probably is drug. Mm. What what is this low under protest? Some guy undressed in front of the assessor's office to protest his property taxes. Why is it always a guy, never a girl? <laughs> I don't think so. Thanks anyway. Um, Jim, a wheat crop to match last year's. Fascinating. Maybe we should put the crossword puzzle on the front page. Uh. Why don't we write a little story on the disappearance of that kid? What's his name, man? Ted Morrison. Uh, you know, we'll put it in a box with a border. Mystery surrounds the arrest of Ted Morrison, son of the chairman of the board of Teletex. Police are being strangely vague, etc., etc. Then when Rossi comes in with the details, we'll flesh it out. Sounds like the kid was busted on a dope charge. The old man has the clout to hush it up. No, uh, no, the parents are in the dark. They're trying to find out what's going on. My daughter knows the kid. She says that a drug charge against him is unlikely. You want to keep the space open? Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll hold it open and we'll see what Rossi comes in with. I saw what he came in with last night. Wouldn't want to put her on the front page. Anything new in that brush fire out in the valley? Yeah, I think it might be arson. You think Charlie said it? He was so desperate for something for the front page. Nothing from Rossi yet, huh? No. City desk. Okay, Charlie, I'll be right in. Uh, Lou, this is Harrow Soder. Hi. Hello. How are you? Will you tell Mr. Grant what you've been telling me? Special agent with the State Bureau of Narcotics Enforcement. I'm uh, here to ask that your reporter back off the Ted Morrison arrest. We're afraid he may inadvertently jeopardize our investigation. How? You already made your arrest. We're after bigger fish. We don't want your reporter to blow eight months of intensive investigative work. What kind of drugs are we talking about? Horse. Heroin. Mexican brown, mostly. Cocaine, of course. Well, that's it. Huh? I wanted something concrete. I got it. Only we can't print it. Is that it? Not for a while. When the time comes... We'll be the first to know. Right. Now look, we've always cooperated with the authorities on matters of this kind, and I told Mr. Soder that, of course, we'll cooperate now. Right, Lou? Yeah, sure. It's always a pleasure to sit on a good story. Rossi. Yeah, Lou? I asked you to check into that arrest quietly. What'd you do, go in there with the bullhorn? What are you talking about? You, at the cop house, making a lot of noise about the Morrison kid. But, Lou, I... Have you ever heard of the word discreet? Lou, I haven't been to the cop house yet. Why not? Wait a second. You haven't been there. No, I was hung up on the illegal alien story. I was planning to stop on my way home. I don't get it. I don't get it either. How did that narcotics agent know enough to tell us to back off a story when we weren't even on it yet? Let's call him and find out. Hi, right, listen, will you get me an agent the name of Harold Soner at the State Bureau of Narcotics Enforcement? Yeah, thank you. Nobody knew you were doing this. Just you, me, Rossi, the guys in the budget meeting. And whoever they talked to. Hmm. What's going on? Did you mention to anybody that you were working on the Morrison story? I almost forgot about it myself. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay, thanks. He wasn't in? I never heard of him. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E.
Now, what do you say, Skipper? How's it going? Let's go in my office. It's quieter. Right. This is the way it looks on that Morrison thing. Yeah, yeah, I... yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what'd you find out? Well, this kid, uh, Ted Morrison, was arrested, but there's no record of his ever having been processed through here. Well, that's strange, isn't it? Not so strange if you tie it in with this other arrest. What's that? A friend of Morrison's, a Michael Carson, was picked up at the Mexican border by the same feds. I think this is just a drug rap and that Morrison's old man is using his influence to squelch it. I keep hearing that. Lou Grant. Uh-huh. Yes, I did. I called your office last night. Harold Soner. Uh-huh. Oh, he is. Well, that's very interesting. Thank you very much. Cute. What's that about? A guy named Soner came in here yesterday representing himself as a special agent of the State Department of Justice Narcotics. He tells us to lay off the Morrison story. Only when we called his office last night, they never heard of him. I get a call just now from the same office saying they made a mistake. Sona really is a narcotics investigator. You probably just didn't talk to the right guy, Lou. Those state viewers are so messed up, it's a wonder they don't go around arresting each other. Do you think it's a drug case? Well, feds, Mexico, rich kid. Smells like it to me. You're right about one thing, it smells. Only if it's drugs, I'll personally double your salary. And if Sona works for the state, I'll triple it. Hey, that'll get me even from the Super Bowl. How about it, Charlie? I think this goes right. It still sounds like drugs. We can harm an important investigation by running it prematurely. Maybe it is a drug case, but it's like none I ever heard of. Usually they're trumpeting about what a great job they've done. Yeah, X million dollars worth of illicit narcotics seized. Yeah, well, the picture roll is Two weeks later, out. they announce that it's mysteriously disappeared. Yeah. The mice ate it. Uh, <laughs> listen, at the very least, someone's playing fast and loose with these kids' constitutional rights. Yeah. Right. Oh, right. hold it. Just, 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 just let me think a minute. What is it, Charlie? Why should we walk on eggshells for this one? I just don't think we have enough. Don't have enough. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You sound like a locker room. The point is, we'll get enough if we go with the story. Smoke out the rest of it. Run it as a mystery. Where is Ted Morrison? Who arrested him? What's he charged with? I say we get it out in the open. Pressure him. Enough pressure and something's bound to surface. Oh, yeah, something's liable to surface, all right. You all agree? You Absolutely, yeah. I do. Okay, we'll go with it. Box below the fold and run over to page three. I have a nagging feeling about this. I don't mind telling you. I don't like it a bit. I read it. Thanks anyway. Mind if I join you? You can sit down. I don't know about joining. Interesting article. Nicely written. We do our best. I was under the impression we had an understanding. You told me you'd keep hands off. I told someone that, yes. But when I checked on him, I discovered he didn't exist. All right. That ID was improvised. I was trying to keep things simple. Then why don't you start by telling me what's going on? I'm sure you must have guessed by now. I'm a very plain man, Mr. Soner, if that's your name. I don't like subtlety. It makes me nervous. If you want to talk to me, talk plain. I suggest you have a talk with your publisher. We have an arrangement with your newspaper. What do you mean arrangement? Who's we? You kidding. Everyone says that. How do I know that's legit? Your other idea looked great, too. Where you get those made? I can assure you it's quite legitimate. You're making little jokes at a time when your country's security is at stake. Oh, really? We'd appreciate it if you killed that story. And any future stories about Ted Morrison 
Michael Carson or Teletext until we give you the all clear. Now, we really appreciate it. CIA preposterous. This time, I think he was telling the truth. You know, at the entrance to CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia, they've got a quotation from St. John, I think. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Who says bureaucrats don't have a sense of humor? Well, I suppose it's possible he was telling the truth. He said they had an arrangement with the Trib. Well, I believe at one time they did have an arrangement when my husband was still living during the heights or oh, the depths of the Cold War. What was the arrangement? Well, I, I remember different things. Harmless things, it seemed to Matthew at the time. Almost routine. But of course you realize that practically all the media in this country has been involved with the CIA. Newspapers, uh, television networks, magazines. Yeah, but the Trib? Why should the Trib be any different from the others? Some of the best papers in the country admit to CIA ties. Did you know this arrangement? No, it was all before I came here. But it was everywhere. It was all around. A congressional investigation brought it all out. What, over 400 journalists since the war? Stringers, reporters, editors, management. Some of them under contract, others doing a friend a favor. It would start so casually, such a mundane way. Phone call from a friend, perhaps some lunch. Oh, and by the way, I understand you're about to leave to join your London bureau or Tokyo, Moscow. And he'd say yes. And the friend would ask him to do what? Nothing. Just asked to talk to him when he got back. Debrief was the fashionable word. Do you have a friend? Matthew did. When he died and I took over this paper, they came to me from time to time asking for favors. I told them to go fly a kite. <laughs> yeah, but they might have had an arrangement with somebody else here. Possibly. Do you know of anyone today on the trip with ties to the CIA? Not that I know of. Sonar intimated that there was someone right here on the paper with ties to them. Today? Yeah, today, now. What could anyone local do for you? Do you remember that case in the East? Kentucky, I think it was. There was a young man hired as a reporter on a respected paper. Couldn't type, couldn't write. Nobody really knew why he got the job. Turned out the CIA had planted him for a career cover so that he would have a history of having worked as a newspaper man. And then they could uh, plant him plausibly on a paper overseas somewhere. Tricky. Mm, quite. And it doesn't take much of that before every American newspaper man abroad is looked upon as a spy. Yeah. And everything we print looks fishy, even the weather reports. All right, they might be handling it clumsily. But if national security is somehow involved, every time anyone mentions national security, we shut our eyes and turn our heads, nobody even wants to know the time of day. I say, let's open our eyes and keep going. I do too. Well, why don't we... Mr. Grant, please. I've already made the decision. Why must you continue making arguments when people are agreeing with you? We could be in for some heat. I know. Too bad. Oh, stop acting like you're so concerned. You love it when things heat up. Billy, Rossi. How'd you two like to team up again on something? I knew you'd be excited. Well, I am, and that's enough. What's the background? Right now, it's pretty much of a blank. The Ted Morrison arrest. I'm oh, going God. ahead with it. Terrific. Now, he hasn't been indicted, at least publicly. And no one knows what he's even charged with. But we do know the government's got him tucked away somewhere, and no one else admits to knowing anything. Start with Teletext, the place he worked. Find out what his job was. Maybe it's related somehow. And if anyone says drugs or narcotics, make them prove it. What if they say national security? Try the First Amendment. Well, what are you waiting for? Chapter headings? Uh, 
What happened to my piece on shopping cart thefts? Kill him. It was very enlightening. But it was such a heavy news day yesterday that I had to put it on the spike. He really fought for it. Well, it's no sweat. I'll wrap out another one. Wrap out. <laughs> I like that. Every time he hears a bell ring on his typewriter, he goes to lunch. Who? Hmm? You think Rossi's the one? Probably. The one what? The guy at the trip who's on the CIA payroll. Are you crazy? Rossi hates the establishment. Good cover. What's the matter? You gone dippy? If I believe Rossi works for the CIA, then I'd have to believe anyone around here could. Well, almost anyone. That include me? Or you? Of course not. <laughs> Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. To Lou Grant. This is not on the budget, but I have something interesting developing. Well, put some ointment on it. I have some information about a possible shakeup in the National Security Agency. Where'd you hear that? From Patterson in the Washington Bureau. Why? Mm. No reason. Yeah, stay with it, Jim, and let us know if you hear anything. Hey, when are we going to see that CIA story on the Metro budget? It's coming along. Have you got anything we can look at? Oh, it's on there real soon. When? Can't tell. Charlie, um, speaking of the CIA, there's a rumor bobbing around that uh, someone on the trip has got an umbilical cord to the agency. And that he uh, or she is feeding them information. Oh, yeah. Huh. Anybody else hear that? Yeah. We all heard it. Is it true? Well, we can't be sure, but it, um, it, it, it kind of looks that way. <clears throat> you have any idea who it is? They don't exactly wear signs. Actually, it could be anyone. Oh, I hope it's that new music critic. I don't like him. Well, you should mention that. I heard of a music critic back east who was on their payroll. I mean, he had a contract with him. Travel to music festivals all over Europe. Our man in Salzburg, huh? Not a bad job. Bite your tongue. Can we get back to the budget, fellas? It's something familiar. It's something real. The rest of this is just fog. Joan? Oh, may I speak to Joan Hume, please? Billy Newman. Joanie? Hi, it's Billy Newman of the trip. Yeah. Um, listen, I wonder, uh, I need you to do me a big favor. Could you set up an interview with Ted Morrison's parents for me? Oh, well, I didn't think it would be easy, but I thought maybe you'd have a better shot at it than I would. Oh, great, Joan, great. Well, anytime, day or night. You have my home number, right? Terrific. Just let me know. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Joe. If you're looking for the submarine plants, I burned them. Oh, hi. Hi there. What was I doing in your desk? Oh, were you in my desk? Uh, I was, uh, I was looking for your candy bar stash. You? Look. You're the one who's been stealing my Snickers. Oh, not so loud, Rocky. I'll buy you a box. You have been copying my stash, and I thought I was going nuts. Rossi. You, the cottage cheese queen, have been scoffing one of the few pleasures I have in life. You're not going to tell anybody, are you? Look, just stay out of my drawers, okay? Hmm. Oh, cut it out. Everyone's affected by this thing. You should have been in some of the budget meetings lately. You can feel the paranoia growing, like mushrooms in a science fiction movie. I felt it myself. I came in this afternoon, I saw this one going through my desk. I thought, she's the pipeline to the CIA. I have a confession to make. 
While I was rummaging in your desk, I suddenly thought, what if I find something that links you to the CIA? Are you kidding? I'm, uh, am I butting in? Well, sit down, Driscoll. Hi, honey. I don't see how you can drink that stuff. Oh, it's easy. I just remember the dry cleaning bills I used to have. And the jobs I used to have. <laughs> I'm a jug man, honey. Didn't she know? I'm sorry. Oh, honey, don't be embarrassed. Listen, everybody has a Jones. Well, you know, a monkey, an addiction. Maybe not as visible as alcohol, but just as tough. You've got one. Rossi does. Oh, Rossi does not. Oh, yeah? Let's see your kick sugar. Gotcha. Hmm. Well, how are you kids doing with the big mystery scoop? Do you have something we can use? Me? I'm just a cop house schlub. I don't move in the cloak and dagger circles. If you did have something, would we hear about it? That's an interesting question. Now, I tell you something. I'm just an old-time reporter. I don't know anything about these fashionable, fancy moves nowadays. But I do know something. The FBI and the CIA, these are our guys. When do people start forgetting that they're on our side? How far back do you want to go? Okay, okay, the CIA had some excesses, but that does not make them the enemy. Listen, I would love to live in a world where we didn't need the FBI or need the CIA, but the sun don't shine out there all the time, or maybe you haven't noticed. There are bad guys out there. Are you equipped to take them on? Because I'm not. Well, nobody says do away with the agencies. But when they start recruiting in my city room, then I start to get nervous. Hell, Lou, we're in the same business, aren't we? We are. It's been a while since I tried to overthrow a foreign government. How about you, Joe? Uh, not since high school. Okay, okay. I meant that we are ferreting out information the same as they are. No, oh, brother. Listen, kid. It may come as a shock to you, but I can remember when it wasn't dirty to try and do a favor for your country. I mean this, Lou. No, I, I know you do, George. Boy, I cannot see anything wrong with, with, with giving the CIA some information that at a cocktail party we'd give it out to anybody who asked for it. You can't be blind to the fact that if one, just one newsman is on the CIA payroll as an informant, then every other American reporter is stuck with that stigma. And after that, are they ever 100%? Lou, I've heard those arguments before. I'm sorry. This is still my country, and these guys are on my side. Why should I have to choose between being a newspaper man and being an American? Who says you can't be patriotic and still be your own man? You think it's possible to have a relationship with the CIA and still look the public in the eye? Yes, I do. Wrong. When everybody knows that the CIA used its ties with the media to angle news coverage its way? No, it's a two-way street. You give a little and you take a little. Listen, I tell them what hotel in Zagreb picks up my passport, and the agency puts me onto a hot story and they help me cover it. What happens to your independence in a relationship like that? <laughs> oh, honey. <laughs> Listen, look, look. I go out and I have lunch with a CIA contact, okay? That's all he is, just a contact. Now, he can go back to the agency and type up a report saying that I'm in his pocket. <laughs> it means nothing. It's all the way you look at things. Are you in someone's pocket, George? Yeah. My bookies. <laughs> now, listen, wait a minute. You mean the CIA, don't you? I'll tell you something. They never asked me. I'm sorry they never asked me. Because if they had, I wouldn't have walked away. And today? Does that go for today? Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Thanks for the exercise. Keeps me out of the bars. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. I'd rather you didn't use that, Miss Newman. It helps us both. I'd like to be as accurate as possible. There's not much I can tell you. Have you seen your son? Yes, he's being held in one of the federal buildings. We talked to him, but we were told not to discuss it. By whom? I can't tell you, Joan. Uh, it's all right. I think we know. Has he been indicted? No. Surely charged? Yes. With what? Drugs? Mrs. Morrison, I just can't tell you. I can. It's 
Good to see you, Joan. I'm sorry I'm late, dear. Uh, this is my husband, Billy Newman of the Tribune. I gathered as much. How do you do? Hello. Mr. Morrison, your son hasn't been indicted, but he has been charged. With what? Espionage. Can you believe such ridiculous nonsense? We really were told not to discuss it. I'm not sure... I don't care if that's not what we're supposed to do. They've charged our son with espionage, Gloria. And they're not going to keep me quiet about their stupidity. What exactly has your son supposed to have done? They say... Now get this. They say that Ted and a friend... Michael Carson. Right. That they sold secrets. Not gave. Sold secrets to the Russian embassy in Mexico City. Well, he was working at Teletext. Did he have access to anything classified? He had a flunky's job. Espionage. Ted, the master spy. Uh, what is this but another example of government incompetence? I tried to get those fool agents up here to look around. Well, you look around, Miss Newman. You think he needed money badly enough to sell out to the communists? No, ever since he was a child. Right, Gloria? Ever since he was a child, all he had to do was ask. I gave him everything. He was a good boy. Does this look like the breeding ground for a friend of our country's enemies? Wait. Don't tell me. Let me guess. You're angry about something. I just spent two and a half hours at Teletex getting the old fast shuffle. Not only did I get zip on Ted Morrison, they wouldn't even admit the things that are printed in their brochures. Are you not a prime contractor for the CIA's communication systems? And they said? Go stick it in your hat. No, oh, not in those words. They kept fucking me to Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Z. You'd have to clear it. Only Mr. Z turned out to be in Goose Bay or Tanzania or Nogales. Skiing. In other words, you came up empty. Lou, Lou, they are a very tight-eyed company. Well, why don't you go back to your desk and meditate for a while? Oh, oh, here. You might want to add this to your file. Some things that Driscoll came up with. Like the fact that Ted Morrison was a clerk with not only top secret, but crypto clearance. Like the fact that he worked in Department 1322, Building L5, also known as the Black Vault, the Code Room. He handled coded materials, uh, key settings, computer programming materials. You know, the stuff they change daily to make sure it's secret. Where did Driscoll get this? I didn't ask him. Maybe he went skiing with Mr. Z. I feel sorry for them. Then you think it's true that Ted did sell secrets? Oh. Yes, I think he did. And so do they. They just don't want to face it. He spoiled him all his life. How spoiled do you have to be to sell out your country? Billy, wait a minute. I've got to tell you a story about Ted. Ted was bored to death one summer, and his mother was worried about him. So she suggested that he clear off a beach lot that the family owned and build a shack for himself and his friends. Well, this lot was loaded with junk, driftwood and cables, pilings and all that kind of stuff. So Ted rented a truck, loaded it all on and hauled it away. Well, that took him at least a week. His mother came down to see how he was doing and how he finished the job. Well, poor Ted, <laughs> poor Ted had cleared off the wrong lot by mistake. Well, he went into a depression that, well, he just wouldn't believe it. Yeah? They bought him the lot he cleared. I wonder how they're going to buy him out of this one. Sure you do. You want a cup of coffee. This better be good. I wouldn't call it good. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to call it. Here. I don't want one. I don't drink it. Let's have it. 
I got to thinking about something you said a couple of days ago about Kellum and how he got his job here, who would hire him, what kind of references he had. So, I checked personnel. His application says no references required, no prior job check needed. Who don't care a stupid thing like that? The notation reads, per Charles Hume. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Well, listen, Lou. If Charlie hired him, then Charlie had to know. Listen, before we go off half-cocked, there's going to be a record somewhere. I want to know where Kellum worked before the trip was blessed with his presence. Okay, but I have to work out of my apartment. I put in a tab for the phone, right? Yeah, yeah, get going. Check with me if you have to leave L.A. Bye-bye. This is a nice piece Donna did on that skunk oil ray propellant. I think it's going to... Well, it must work. And when's the last time you heard of a skunk getting raped? Maybe they just never reported. Okay, thanks. No good. I was just going to get you. I've got to call you, now. There's a possibility that uh, Ted Morrison may not be indicted. The whole thing is up in the air. Where'd you get the tip from? You think your reporters are the only ones with sources? Charlie, you and I have to have a talk. Well, it'll have to wait. I'm overdue now for a meeting across town. When do you get back? I don't know. Uh, how about 6.30 at McKenna's? I don't just want company. It's important. Okay, 6.30. I got the story on the Ted Morrison arrest and a great idea for a sidebar. That's swell. Maybe you didn't hear me. Listen, his parents just admitted he's been charged with espionage. You want me to come back tomorrow? That's great, Billy. Write it up. Oh, I can understand why you're so blasé. We get dozens of local espionage stories every day. I think Kellum's our CIA plan. Oh, my God. And I just bought some more treasury bonds. I'm serious. Bossy's checking it out. Do we know who did hire him? Uh, yeah, sure. You don't think that Charlie... Oh, come on. Charlie? Hi. Um, Hi. where's my dad? Uh... He's, a, he's at some meeting across town. I think he'll be out a while. Oh, well, I wanted to buy him a drink. <laughs> that man works too hard. You all work too hard. Do you know, we were in Washington last year, and I gave my dad an ultimatum. You spend more time with me. Excuse me. You were in Washington last year? In the state? Uh, no, D.C. Why? I mean, Dad had some business there, I guess. Newspaper business. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what else could it be? See you later. Goodbye, Joe. We do have a bureau in Washington. I know, I know. You want me to come along? No. No, thanks. What are you doing here? You're supposed to be digging into Kellum's job background. I thought you'd be interested in this. In 1971, Gary Kellum was in Japan, some PR job to the Army. Then, in 1972, after a brief stint in the United States, he went to work in Chile, working in the advertising department of the Trident Tuna Company, some American cannery down there. He left Chile four days after the overthrow of Allende. Then he got a job as a technical writer in a defense plant in Baltimore that was, now get this, selling arms to the Mideast. Where'd you get all that? In the phone booth downstairs. There was a Mrs. Kellum on his card. Uh, I told her I was from the Pulitzer Committee. Hello? Hello? Hi, 
didn't have time to go into it earlier with you, but it's a real bombardment. They're not going to prosecute Ted Morrison or his friend for espionage. They've dropped charges? Yep. Even though they really got the goods on them. I mean, they tailed them for months. They've got pictures of meetings with known Soviet agents. They even caught one of the kids with microfilm on them. But the government doesn't want to prosecute because all the sensitive material will have to come out in the trial. We, we keep bumping up against Catch-22. Twice a day. Right here on the paper, for example. That's, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Shoot. I know about Kellum. That's true, Charlie. Yep. There wasn't anything I could do. You could have said, now other people have. Other people don't have Mrs. Pinchon as a boss. Mrs. Pinchon? Well, of course. How do you think it started? She said she didn't know anything about it. When did she say that? You were there. We were both in our office. What are we talking about? about the fact that Kellum is on the CIA payroll. He is? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. You just admitted it. What are you talking about? I said I knew about Kellum, and you looked guilty. And I said, then it's true. And you said there wasn't anything you could... What are we talking about? Mrs. Pinchon forced me to hire that Lox, who was the son of a cousin of hers. Now, you know how she feels about nepotism. I think she was ashamed that she did it. So that's why your name was on his card up in personnel? Yeah. <laughs> boy, oh boy, am I glad I'm really happy. You're not in the CIA. How many of those have you had? It all seemed to add up. You were in Washington some kind of business last year. You know an awful lot about the CIA. You were coming up with inside information. And then this Kellum thing. Sure, I was in Washington. I went to the Smithsonian, to the Pentagon, to the Lincoln Memorial, to a couple of bars, a couple of restaurants. Charlie. I can't believe it. I mean, as long as we've been friends, not only do you suspect me of a crummy thing, but you investigate me behind my back. How low can you get? I mean, did, did you run a credit check on me, too? Charlie. I, I mean, you know there's no excuse for this. All you had to do was come to me and lay it out. Well, Charlie, what do you think I'm doing here? Boy. Boy. I mean, if you'd only come to me early, you could have saved us both a lot of trouble. Charlie. What do you mean if I... Huh? I could have saved us both a lot of trouble. How about another drink? No, 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 come on, come on. What did you mean? It saved us both a lot of trouble. Well, I started to think about how you left Minneapolis. How you wrote me for a job out of the blue. I realized that I didn't really know what you've been doing these last 10 years. I mean, I never checked, I just took your word for it. And uh, then after I, I spoke to your old company commander, who incidentally is now driving a truck. But, but wait a minute, let me, let me get this straight. You've been investigating me behind my back because you thought I was on the CIA's payroll? I can't believe it. After the years we've known each other? Looks like we're both wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. I'm sorry this whole thing happened. Um, I'm glad it's over. Right. It's over. It's finished. We can forget about it. Right. an interesting little item, page 26. 
Theodore Morrison and Michael Carson, both age 22, were released from custody late yesterday from Highland Heights Jail. Drug charges having been dropped because of insufficient evidence. Two-inch story like that, and look what we went through. We still don't know who it is. What is it they say about what you don't know won't hurt you? In this case, what I don't know is driving me nuts. Who is it? Who in this room can't we trust? Women who can't bear children to lonely hearts who just want something to love. More and more women are turning to baby snatching. American Justice explores the complex issues surrounding infant abduction tonight. Now, a cop is pressured into accusing the wrong man of murder on Police Story, next on a and &E.